ESPN First Take is presented by Chase, so you can. Historically back to university, uh, Gremlin State gained nationwide headlines when its entire football team boycotted practice and forfeited a game against Jackson State last weekend due to what they believe were unfair conditions, including mold and mildew in athletic facilities, along bus trips, and personnel decisions. But after meeting with former coach Doug Williams and other Grambling alumni, they were advised to go out and play football because their message was clear. As part of the athletic program uh, at Grambling State University, the football team took a stance on what we thought was right. We did not, we did not quit on our university. There are many problems that exist, and if no one says anything, nothing will become of our institution. We hope Coach Eddie Robinson and his legendary parents appreciate we took a stand and we thought if, uh, thought what was right. A meeting was held with some Gremlin legends as well as an important person to come to a mutual agreement for our best interest at heart that ensure we had updated facilities and that we agreed to come back on the practice field. Although we're going to continue our season, we have forgot we have not forgotten the situation and how we've gotten here. Gremlin has given the opportunity to be a part of its legacy and we're looking to improve its conditions for the university and future student athletes. Grambling President Frank Hoyt said the players would not face repercussions for the boycott, but what they did do was help highlight funding problems at historically black universities and colleges. Uh, we will continue, this is his statement, to support our football team, our players. We will pay attention, obviously, as much as we can financially to enhance all the athletic facilities, including those in football. My concern now is we move forward together. The students have expressed themselves, their opinions. The students most definitely have expressed themselves and their opinions. Stephen A., here's the question. Do you believe, from what you know, the players handled themselves correctly? <sighs> Skip Bayless, Kerry, that might be the toughest question I've ever had sitting in this chair, to be quite honest with you. The reason I say that is because I believe their cause was just. I believe that the players truly believe what they were doing was right. I don't want to hear from this president um, as it pertains to just his leadership and what have you, because I believe that if the proper leadership was in place, the cries of the players, the concerns of the football program and beyond would have been heard far sooner than this incident had occurred. And ultimately, it would have prevented this incident from occurring. But I think the best way to answer that question is to say there are no winners. And I can't sit here and applaud the kids for taking this kind of action, although I do understand it. I understand where they're coming from. I don't think they should be excoriated or anything like that, but I think ultimately they will be. I think for the president to sit there and say there will be no repercussions is laughable. I think kids, we expect them to be ignorant, and I don't mean that in a derogatory fashion, just in terms of them not understanding the real world. You don't take actions like this, and it comes devoid of repercussions. There always are. The likelihood, even though they haven't been fined as of yet, mm -hmm. we're talking about Grambling State University, which has had its funding cut. I believe the number that they're using is they've endured a 50% cut in state funding over several years that has affected the entire campus. The athletic department alone was asked to cut $335,000 from its overall department budget of $6.8 million. And the football, uh, as a potential football, was cut $75,000 to about $2 million. This is a football team. That's a lot of money. And the fact that you have those cuts, obviously there are things that are going to transpire that's not going to be favorable for the players. I looked at the pictures of their weight room facility. It's garbage. It's a, an atrocious condition under which players should be uh, practicing, conditioning themselves, etc. Being on a bus ride for 15 hours, it's ridiculous. Dirty uniforms, stuff that contributes to staph infections. These are all the things that they were concerned about. So they do have a legitimate beef. But the question is, did you exhaust all the necessary measures before you took this action? Because this kind of action, it does come across as if you have quit. It does come across as if you have acted inappropriately. Not only that, there's an innocent vi victim in all of this in Jackson's, in Jackson State. Sure. They had nothing to do with this. Right. But their homecoming was ruined. It cost them money. All of these things are things that have to be taken into consideration. I support where the players are coming from from the standpoint of taking a stand 
and trying to bring attention to just the, just the atrocious state of affairs that exists, not just at their school, HBCU. but at HBCUs. I mean, you have private schools suffering as it pertains to funding. It's hit the public schools now, and we're seeing the rippling effect that it has. And it's an incredible concern for myself and others who come from HBCUs. I need to make more contributions. A lot of us need to be contributing more. We need to get more actively involved. But in the end, I can't sit up here on national TV knowing that there are an abundance of African-American athletes at HBCUs, giving them the okay that such an action is okay, because it's not. Because in the end, you're going to be associated with quitting. And as a result, you never know what kind of rippling effect. I don't think it's fair, considering the circumstances, but you never know what kind of residual impact they may have. And that's my concern. I don't think they're wrong. But that doesn't mean they're going to be perceived, that they're going to be looked, that, that, that doesn't mean they're not going to be looked at as being wrong. You don't, and I'm worried about but that. But you don't think they're wrong, but you don't necessarily think that they're right. I don't think you've exhausted every means and every measure before you took the action that you took. And ultimately, it comes across as you quitting. And I, I'm concerned about the residual impact and the ramifications it's it may have. Okay. I listen to all you just said. And I think my place here is to try to frame this historically. Okay. In the late 70s, I spent a week at Grambling State University when Grambling was still Grambling. And this is way before your times. But once upon a time, Grambling was the biggest attraction in college football, not just historically black college football. I'm talking college football. It was the globe trotters of college football. The team and the band were sought to perform everywhere worldwide, from Yankee Stadium to Tokyo, on a yearly basis. They couldn't keep up with all the requests for their appearances to both play the game and participate by putting on the halftime show with the Grambling State Marching Band, which was a spectacle unto itself. They were the globetrotters of college football, was the football team and the band. And I happened to be there, and I didn't know this at the time, but I went to see Doug Williams when he was in school there. He was about to be a, the first pick in the draft. And I got there at the height of Grambling football. And it was about to decline. And the next few years right thereafter, it started to fade. What happened? Slowly but surely through the 70s, the black stars that had historically chosen to go to Grambling, and these are way before you, Buck Buchanan, Big Hands Johnson, yeah. Tank Younger, I can go on, all the way up to Doug Williams. Doug Williams was really the last great star to play at Grambling. The, the best ba black players, especially in the South, started to realize that, hey, Oh, now Alabama wants me. I can actually play for all white Alabama that had been historically all white or Texas or Oklahoma, wherever it was. Yes, they will now recruit you. Oh, well, that's a little bigger stage because the irony of Grambling is it never drew that well at home, but it could pack them on the road. But its constituency there around Ruston, Louisiana, wasn't that great. Yeah. So they can't generate that many, that, the big funds at home the way Alabama can in Tuscaloosa. So all of a sudden it began to fade to the point that since 2000, over the last 13 years, Grambling's only had three draft choices. Mm -hmm. Only three draft picks and 13, that's terrible. Now this team, to, to frame this, has lost 18 of its last 19 mm -hmm. games. Are you kidding, Grambling? And Doug Williams had gone back out of the goodness of his heart for, I'm pretty sure, low pay. I don't think they could pay a lot of money just because he loves that school. Listen, anybody who went there all the way up, I, I was around Everson Walls a lot. They love their school. They are willing to give back to their school in any way possible. But Doug clashed with the new administration, the president you referred to, yeah. Mr. Pogue, right. Because Doug wanted to solicit outside private funding to fix the weight room, to remove the mold, to put a new floor in the weight room. Because there are still ex-NFL players who love their Grambling, who are willing to give back to Grambling. But the new administration wants to de-emphasize football. They want to break from the past. They want to re-emphasize education. And Grambling was always a really good school. It always got underestimated with, for the quality of its academics and its education. Mm -hmm. So now the new administration wants to sort of cut ties with the past 
the state funds the school, and the state is saying, no, no, we're going to cut it in half. Well, well, now you're down to, you, you, you can barely compete, yeah. and, and you can't recruit the best players anymore. So Doug, they fired Doug Williams over this clashing over private versus state funds. Right. So Doug throws up his hands and says, oh, great, which was, that was a big mistake on the administration. You, you can't fire Doug. I don't care how bad the team so is at this point. Sure. Now you have completely cut ties with the past. So th these kids, I feel so sad for them because they went there because their parents loved Grambling and they knew of the great tradition. Mm -hmm. And I hate to say it, it's dying. It just is. I don't know what to do about it. So are, were they right or wrong? I don't know. They, they were they were desperate. Yeah, yeah, but that's, you know, but, that, but that's my point. Yeah. My point to you, my point in what you're saying, and I appreciate that education mm -hmm. because, again, you know things because you yeah. were back there covering it. And you always told me of these stories, and I appreciate it because I wanted you to tell that story. But you have to understand something. I'm not saying they were wrong. Yeah. I'm saying that the world that we live in, we you wanted, these kids wanted to mm -hmm. take an action that brought attention to their personal sure. plight. Yeah. There is no crime in that. No. I am not denigrating them for that in any way. I understand it, and I appreciate it. And you couple that with the information you just disseminated to us all, I appreciate it even more. The problem is, if you, knowing what you know about the corporate America that awaits them, in terms of the big business of football and beyond, mm -hmm. everything that you just said, Who's going to take that into consideration and who's going to remember it when it comes to dealing with any level of insubordination? One of the things that I point to when covering the NBA and NFL and all of this other stuff, and we discuss the issues of collective bargaining, for example, you've got to be very, very careful about the negotiations yeah. that transpire. Why? Because once the negotiations are over, Things are remembered, yep. and whatever nuggets you win, whatever category you win in a particular way, if you stick out your chest and walk around like, I won this battle and I won this battle, it sets the stage for a later period to follow where once negotiations kick in again, all of a sudden they're going to be like, oh, no, not this time. You ain't getting away with this the way you got away with that before. Well, you sit there and you compare it to a situation like this. If you are a college program, if you are an institution, you cannot allow this to be perceived as the players winning. Because in the yeah. end, what's going to happen is they're going to say, well, that could incite other people to do, do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. We're going to shut this down. And how do you do that? You can't do it publicly. That's why you got Paul get all of these boys yeah. talking about, oh, there's going to be no repercussions. You've got people here in attendance talking about, oh, they're there to make sure. Uh, student Athlete Human Rights Project, the national director, Emmett Gill, he's there to make sure there's not going to be retaliation. Excuse me, you act like it's going to happen tomorrow or next month. I'm sorry. There's plenty of time for the retaliation, retaliation. But to kick in. So that's my concern for them, and that's my concern for students student athletes who think about taking these positions. That's why it's important to make sure every measure is exhausted before you resort to this. So there's justification for your action that's unwavering and unquestionable. Okay. And right now, I don't know if they have that at their disposal. So the players protested over funding, right? That's what it came yeah, down to. Want money. Bus rides, bus rides. Better, con better conditions, weight room. Sure. better weight room, yeah. better locker room. Mm -hmm. Clean, just clean facilities, if nothing else. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And the state is saying, no, not interested. The new administration is saying, mm, we don't care that much about football. So what's the answer, Stephen A? I don't have one. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's not like there's a mandate that says Grambling has to have a great football team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it just... But their purpose was probably to obviously get attention. And they did that. They were able to win. Yeah, well, what to do you some think? degree, but listen to this. Yeah. Will Sutton, university spokesperson for Grambling, said that local health department inspectors acting on an anonymous tip recently visited Grambling's athletic yeah. facilities and recommended changes to improve conditions. Sure. But, quote, did not deem facilities a health hazard. Right. Is that not PC? Is that not as PC <laughs> as it comes? So what, I, mean, what, I <laughs> know what keep, you keep saying exhaust other measures. Give them some examples if these students are, are watching. Well, again, what again, uh, again, if you're going to, for example, when Doug Williams comes to you and tells you to go back out there and play, yeah. did you talk to him beforehand? How much did you talk to him? What about the Everson Walls of the world and others? Those people that was able, or the, the people that helped Doug Williams generate 
the $11,000 in revenue to get those new floors? Could you have used them to speak on your behalf? The meeting with the university president along with the athletic director, could you have met with them prior to it? Could you have taken a stand and found a way to inconvenience things on campus as it pertains to the president and the university and the way they want to do things outside of not missing the football game. That way you don't cost the university a fine, you don't cost Jackson State a fine, you don't go through any of that stuff. There's an abundance of things that could have been done. Again, I don't want to come across as faulting the players because I'm sensitive to it and I, I understand it. But at the same time, there's a reason that you have protocol. There's a reason that you have individuals in place to speak on your behalf. Mm -hmm. You've got to utilize and exhaust those. That way you shield yourself from ultimate retribution. Or because are they, they really have. capable of fending off retribution? Not at now, all. Now, I mean, once the story goes away, you think people you think people coming back to it? Yeah. They coming yeah. back to it. Yeah. They're on their own now. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about. The, the last name I want to mention, because I neglected to, was the great Eddie Robinson, yes, Coach sir. Rob. Yeah, they refer to him. Somewhere up there, he, he's weeping over this. Yes, this would be incomprehensible to Eddie Robinson. It's one weird. of the greatest yeah. coaches in the history of this sport. Stephen A. said it, but thank you for the education, because you really put it in perspective. Thank you. We appreciate it. Coming up next, guys, um, from the collegiate arena to the pros. Jay Cutler among many injured during a rough week seven in the NFL, despite new rules and fines.